The many faces of Jesus is not whatever you're picturing. And if you're religious, specifically Christian, remember that this is just an account of a historical event with occasional jokes for me and maybe a little bit of understated bias. The many faces of Jesus is also known as the sex life of Jesus, as well as the love affairs of Jesus. It was a 1973 screenplay by Danish writer and director Jens Jorgen Thorsen, who wanted to turn it into a movie. Remember this name and face, because he's our main character in this story. Thorsen was a man who can best be described as a provocateur. In the words of an author in Denmark, Thorsen liked to provoke the authorities and unsettle the bourgeoisie, as a reminder that basically just means middle class. So a large swath of the population, especially in the 70s, when the middle class actually existed, Thorson's primary method of provoking the public was through the use of pornography. You see, in 1969, Denmark legalized porn. And since it was suddenly legal to create pornographic work, Thorson began getting involved in the production of erotic films. He was fascinated with both Jesus and sex, appearing on a magazine cover in 1963 as a crucified Santa Claus with a cannon for a penis. Okay, no joke, I didn't look up this guy before deciding to do this video. And in this exact moment in the script, I decided to do so for the first time. There he is. I think we should be entirely unsurprised that this guy wanted to make a Jesus sex movie. Anyway, you get the idea. This guy's here to stir controversy. Creating a pornographic film about Jesus became his greatest goal. He said, I believe the best way to give the Pope a forceful kick in the ass is to turn up the heat on Jesus. In the film, when Jesus rises up out of the grave, he'll ball a farmer girl. I don't think the algorithm will catch that one. That by itself signifies, in my opinion, what Jesus ought to stand for, instead of standing for the repression of life and eroticism. Yeah, man, this guy's not messing around. Thorsen regularly criticized the DFI, the Danish Film Institute. The DFI is Denmark's national agency responsible for supporting and encouraging film and cinema culture. We're talking government-backed, baby. Thorson's situation is that he needs to get funding for his Jesus sex movie, and he's got to go through the Danish Film Institute to get it. Initially, in 1972, they rejected his application for funding. But in a stroke of luck, the funding system was changed by an act of parliament that very same year. And there just so happened to be a film director by the name of Gert Fredholm, who suddenly had the authority to approve grants of the DFI. Fred Holmes secured a grant for Thorson for about 600,000 Danish kroner. I wonder how much that is in today's money. I got you covered. 600 Danish kroner in 1972 converts to about 4.5 million kroner today, which, once converted, is roughly 650,000 US dollars. Not bad for a movie with a very real possibility of getting you killed. Fred Holm acknowledged that the film was set to be blasphemous, pornographic, sadistic, obscene, and poetic. I'm just going to assume that anyone from the United States supports his right to fund the film, given our core beliefs in both freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Right, guys? Right, guys? Right, guys? Having secured the money, Thorson planned to shoot his movie in, and I'm probably pronouncing this wrong, Opt Valcruz France, this little dot, in the southeast region of France. The many faces of Jesus would depict Christ as a drunk, a bank robber, a lover of Mary Magdalene, a lover of John the Baptist, and in one scene would feature him stripping in front of a group of prostitutes. He would also chant a phrase that I'm too worried would get my video removed on YouTube, which you can check out by navigating to the article yourself. But only after you've left a like on this video, so my metrics aren't destroyed by everyone doing a mass exit. And by the way, it's not like Thorson was the first person to depict Jesus in a provocative manner. There were other artists in Europe who had already done this. It's just that Thorson was the first person to be so deliberate in inviting controversy and criticism. By 1973, the decision of Denmark to fund the movie and the decision of France to host the location led to controversy all over the world. And I couldn't find evidence of this, but according to the article, the controversy was not helped by Thorson appearing in media coverage sitting on top of a rocket and claiming that Jesus' penis would match its size in the movie. 5,000 Christians protested in the streets of Denmark. A German Catholic newspaper called on Queen Margaret II, the Queen of Denmark, to intervene. She didn't. 
Crazily enough, Queen Margaret's reign began the year all of this started, in 1972. She only stepped down from the throne at the beginning of this year in 2024. 52 years of reign. I literally haven't done anything for 52 years. People discussed using Denmark's blasphemy law to prevent the film's creation, which also never came to fruition, and it caused such a stir in Danish society that it's thought to have been the entrance of power to two political parties in the 1973 Danish general election, the Christian People's Party and the Progressive Party. Pope Paul VI made a public statement regarding the film. He was the Pope from 1963 to 1978. He condemned the film, and Thorson responded by offering the Pope the role of Judas. For anyone unfamiliar with the Bible, Judas is the guy that betrayed Jesus, leading to his execution. So you know how at the beginning in this video I said, remember that this is just an account of a historical event, with occasional jokes for me, and maybe a little bit of understated bias. Well, I grew up in Texas in the 90s and the 2000s. I promise this is related. I was 10 years old during September 11th. And if you don't live in the United States, some brief context is that Texas is a particularly proud region of the country. It's home to a heavily Christian population. And after 9-11, Islamophobia ran rampant. A Middle Eastern family I knew was threatened by their own neighbors. Anyone from the Sikh religion did not have a good time. And many, many people, you'll just have to take my word on this, would often say things like, Christians would never do something like this. We don't react in violent ways. Every version of outrage mixed with a healthy dose of grandstanding was pretty much the standard between 2001 to 2005. Just something to keep in the back of our minds as we continue. Now back to the story. After the Pope's statements in 1973, the Danish ambassador's residence in Rome was attacked with Molotov cocktails. Around the same time, the embassy in Madrid received bomb threats. Right before the movie was set to begin filming, the French director of the National Center for Cinema and Animated Images, I assume is what that translates to, which was France's government agency for film, just like the Danish Film Institute we talked about earlier, banned the film from being produced in the country. The director responsible for the ban specifically said he was motivated by his desire to not blaspheme against the world's one billion Christians. So Thorson, no longer being able to provide a shooting schedule for his film, lost the grant that had been provided to him by the Danish government. Two years later, in 1975, all those events from 1973, the film's grant getting approved and then effectively being stripped because of public backlash, led Thorsen to try and reform the Danish Film Institute's grant process. As you can imagine, certain members of the government weren't a fan of this. But as fate would have it, Social Democrats had regained power. Without getting into the politics, this basically meant that Thorsen had a higher chance of getting funding for his movie. So he secured a new shooting location in Turkey, and the DFI granted him a fund of 900,000 kroner, 300,000 more than his first grant, or nearly 900,000 US dollars today. Crazy thing is, the Danish Film Institute isn't actually the government itself. They're just a government agency. So when the government approved the grant, the DFI was obligated to pay it. This led to the members of the DFI funding the project and then resigning en masse. Unfortunately for Thorsen, in the following year, 1976, the Danish Ministry of Culture, Natalie Lind, ruled that the project was against the moral rights of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the four disciples of Christ that have books named after them at the beginning of the New Testament in the Bible. And her decision overruled the DFI, meaning Thorsen was once again unable to receive funding. He made more attempts at producing the film in other countries, including both Finland and Sweden, but both governments made moves to prevent it, rendering his efforts unsuccessful. He tried again to get it produced in the United Kingdom in 1976, prompting the Prime Minister at the time, Jim Callahan, to say, quote, Thorsen would be a most unwelcome and undesirable visitor to these shores. Even the Queen commented through a spokesperson on the issue, which was a rare statement in and of itself, referring to Thorsen's plans to make the film there as obnoxious. From here, the attempts to create the film largely fell apart. Despite never having actually been made, the many faces of Jesus caused enough of a stir to have a real cultural and political impact. But two of the most notable outcomes of this attempt to make a movie include, number one, a multi-decade-long hoax that a movie starring a debaucherous gay Jesus was in the works. 
As recently as 2018, regulators around the world were still receiving complaints due to what started as a chain letter with the claim in the 70s, and I assume as an email chain from the 90s forward. And number two, a film about Jesus that Thorson actually did end up making called The Return. In my brief attempt to find evidence on this film, I didn't come up with much. A few images came back on Google, and I had roughly the same success on YouTube. My understanding is that it depicts Christ's return in what was at the time present-day 90s. What I do know is that it wasn't nearly as provocative as the original film Thorson wanted to make. Also that it just generally wasn't received very well. So that's the story. Depending on your stance regarding projects like this, that was either a happy or a sad ending. The craziest part is that without all the public outcry, the film probably wouldn't have ever made a major splash in a greater context. It's not like Thorson was a well-known successful director. So just remember that the next time you're publicly enraged, that it's possible you're just feeding the Streisand effect. See you guys next time. Thorson regularly, re regularly criticized. <laughs> Some brief context is that Texas is a particularly proud reason. F this led to the members of the DFI funding the pop, pop. Goes the weasel. Unfortunately for Forth foursome he probably had a foursome i just did it in the chris rock will smith slap video where jim carrey says it in <clears throat> i just did it in the chris rock says it in an interview despite never ever actually never ever have her have her <laughs> peanut butter picked a pepper due to what started as a chain letter in the saving saving these <laughs> Ugh.